So it's my absolute pleasure today to um, interview my long-term colleague and a hero of mine, uh, Professor Mark Moynihan, who's just been awarded the, he's giggling already because he's a hero of mine, <laughs> because he's just been awarded the McKenzie Medal in Cardiology, which is pretty much the highest honour that can be achieved in our field. And first of all, just huge congratulations on that, Mark. I mean, it's your career has been extraordinary, you know, consultant clinical scientist, you know, one of the first consultant clinical scientists, clinical cardiovascular lead at King's, research lead, author, international speaker, it goes on and on. But this, this is um, a real pinnacle of achievement and it needs marking and, uh, and really needs uh, noting by everyone in our society. So congratulations from us all, first of all. Thank you, Claire. Thank you. I can't think of a more deserving recipient who has really demonstrated that echocardiography is a specialty in itself. And that is really uh, the whole centre of, of my presidency is trying to create that idea that echo is a career in itself. And so this makes this interview really special to me. So thank you. Um, I think I'd like to take you back if I can and just ask you, because how did you get into ECHO? How did it start? Tell me about that. Um, well, many years ago, uh, actually, probably when I was still a student and uh, one of my colleagues, Peter Richardson, um, bought from his research funds an old Smith Klein M mode ECHO machine. And all it did was it just had a single transducer and all it did was M mode ECHO. And uh, he, he thought it'd be an interesting research tool. Uh, he was looking for someone to work with him on it, uh, and uh, and he approached me, uh, and I, I was, you know, inquisitive at that time, and you know, I, I thought about, well, you know, this probably has got a long way to go. If you think about how bats use ultrasound to visualize the whole of their environment, uh, this is the starting off of using ultrasound to visualize the heart. Um, so it was a goal for me. It was a golden opportunity to get in at the beginning. So I started playing with this machine. Um, and uh, and then I I went to a, a lecture given by Graham Leach, who I think uh, was completely inspirational in my career, um, and uh, and learned all about M mode echo as it was then. Two D hadn't even started, um, and and that's really how it started. And I've it's always held a complete fascination for me as a technique, and yeah. to watch it evolve over all the years. So. It's incredible, isn't it? I mean, it, I can't think of a test that, that can cover every specialty in the way that echocardiography can and contribute to everything that goes in, on around the hospital in such a vital and pivotal way. And again, I think that's why um, becoming echocardiographers as, as a specialty is so important. Where do you think we're going to go next? Um, well, I think, you know, it, it's, it's never going to be a sort of quantum leap in a very short space of time, but you know, echo undoubtedly is going to evolve. Um, and I think, you know, people may not like to hear this, but I think there's going to be more use of, of handheld devices. And I think echo is going to move more out of the echo department or the echo lab, whatever you hear to want to call it and, and be done elsewhere as well. And I think that that's important for the future of the society. And no doubt we'll get on to talk about that later on. And I think AI will, will increasingly play an important role in ECHO, both actually in guiding people to do and acquire the images, so for people who aren't experienced, but also in automating the interpretation process uh, and, and making diagnosis. So it's making great inroads into other aspects of medical imaging and is really now starting to impact upon echocardiography. Yeah. And then the other, the other area, which I think we're going to see continuously major developments is in structural imaging because you know structural cardiology for percutaneous cure, treatments of valve lesions and ASCs and things like that is increasing at a rate of knots mm -hmm. and and it can't be done without ultrasound imaging uh, without echocardiography um, so I think we're going to see an expansion in, in that area as well and it will become a subspecialty of echocardiography in itself I think. Absolutely I, I agree with that I th I'm curious, if you look back at your career and think about all the people and the processes that have played such a big part in your career, what, what advice would you give to yourself looking back on your career or indeed people who want to have a career like yours? How do you create such an interesting pathway? Well, well, as you said, you know, when I started off clinical scientists, 
didn't exist. Mm. Uh, and uh, I was I was very lucky in not only Peter Richardson, who I've already mentioned, but but David Jewett, who was a uh, uh, who joined King's actually at the same time as me and was a scenic cardiologist there. He he latched onto me and mentored me and and encouraged me uh, to develop. And I think, you know, I, I, I everyone needs that. Everyone needs that guidance, that mentorship, someone they can turn to to look up to. Um, and I I was very lucky in you know the fact that David guided me and mentored me, encouraged me, sent me on two sabbaticals to Stanford University to increase my knowledge. Uh, and, and so I was incredibly lucky. But, you know, there are there are plenty of other people out there like David. And I think if, if you're young and starting, um, then find someone that can can mentor you. And the other thing is that, you know, if you're a, a physiologist or a clinical scientist, you know, working in echo, then don't just focus on the echo. Learn a bit about cardiology. Uh, and what I did um, as a student was I went to as many medical student lectures as I possibly could on cardiology um, and, and went and sat in on you know the back of the room on as many as I possibly could and the ward rounds and the teaching and things like that uh, because I was in a position as a supernumerary student so I was additional as the workforce and had the opportunity to do that but you know I, I think it's something I would encourage all students who want to take up echo to do because you can't look at the technique in isolation you need to know how it fits into the overall management of the patient so find a mentor and and learn about cardiology as well as learning about echo yeah it's really interesting i think that that is absolutely in in line with modern practice i think because we we've, we've become too siloed i think our working and our professional relationships have become too siloed and it's just not going to work the nhs isn't going to cope unless we work as teams skilled teams across the boundaries and i i really believe that's the way forward so that's really really interesting mark let me turn now to the, the bsc um uh, you were obviously the i think the second president if i got that right, right yeah yeah this, so almost the founding president of the BSC. And, and now I have you as my senior advisor on council for which I'm incredibly grateful to have your, your incredible wisdom there for me. So thank, thank you for that. Um, what do you think society's done for the profession over the years? Um, well, I, I, think, I think it's done lots. I mean, I think it has made echocardiography a profession so that people can, can follow. Um, I think it is helped develop a career pathway for people who who want to do echo and you know we've had over the years discussions with the Department of Health um, and uh, um, with other professional bodies about developing as a, a career pathway and I think also the BSC has provided support and I you know in my involvement with the BSC over many many years I can think of numerous occasions where the BSC has reached out to members supported them and, and, the, and the pandemic is just one recent example of how the BSC has shown great leadership given advice to departments about how they should manage it and and actually defended our members you know when we were struggling with things like PPE and things like that uh, and what should we do and what shouldn't we do? Was it okay to do limited studies? The society, I think, has played a pivotal role in supporting our members. Um, and that's just the most recent example. Um, yeah, well, that's fantastic. Um, I'm glad that I'm glad that's being useful. And what do you, where do you think the society is headed now over the next five years, ten years, Mark? Well, you know, as I've already implied, I think we have to be aware of the fact that echocardiography is changing uh, and that more and more echoes are going to be done out of the echo department by other people. I mean, you can buy a handheld echo machine for £2,000 now. Uh, and, you know, you're not going to stop people doing that. Medical students are very soon going to be abandoning stethoscopes and, and will be using a £2,000 handheld machine. So I my advice to the society is to is to be inclusive um, because this is this is going to happen and so either we we go along with it and, and we help guide it and make sure that there are standards and that this is done properly or else it's just going to happen without us um, and, and I think that's that's really important that we you know we we are inclusive um, and that we also increase what the things that our, our members seem to value which is the educational uh, content that we provide to a number of different 
modalities, um, including our, our annual general meeting. Um, so we should do that and, and also provide guidelines because practice of ECHO is different in different countries. And, and I think it's good that the BSE has come out with a whole fleet of guidelines and recommendation documents, which have got a, a UK flavor. Now that doesn't mean that we ignore what's going on in other continents and other parts of the world, but you know, recognize that practice is a bit different here. A lot of ECHO is done by cardiac physiologists and clinical scientists, whereas in other countries, that's not always the case. So I, 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 you know, there's lots for the society to do going forward. Um, yeah. but we, we, we need, need to keep to, our eyes open. Yeah, we need to make sure we're on the, on the train, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. So I'll just take you back now for my last question, if I may. What Your incredible career, what what personal achievement do you consider to be, or your cup, top couple of personal achievements through your career to be the ones that you think, yeah, I really made a dent there? Um, well, I mean, there's, there's, a num there's a number of things. Uh, yeah. In terms of, of research and things, I, I, I think Contrast Echo is one area where, you know, I worked really hard. I did my PhD on it. And, and when Contrast started off, I, again, I was very, very lucky that a, a, a cardiologist called Steve Feinstein, who's in Chicago, Steve invented the first ultrasound contrast agent. I went to the ACC to present some initial research I was doing using contrast and Steve latched onto me. And when I started talking about, well, we should look at these agents in a different way and monitor their frequency response to the ultrasound rather than just looking at the backscatter, um, people thought I was crazy, but not Steve. And Steve said, no, Mark, I really think you're onto it or something. And now actually, if you look at contrast specific imaging modalities on all our echo machines, that's the way they do it. Um, so I, you know, I feel very privileged to have been in there at the beginning of it. Um, so that's one area, you know, other areas are 3D echo, which everyone knows I'm a great champion of. Um, I mean, I didn't invent it, but I've certainly tried to encourage people to use it. Uh, it's a constant source of frustration to me that people don't use it more because I think it's got so much to offer. Uh, and then if it's all right, Claire, I just mentioned three things to do with the society, which, you know, I've been involved in, but I'm really proud of the BSC for, for doing them. The first of all is accreditation. Um, you know, I, I introduced personal accreditation when I was uh, the second president, and it was a really difficult, stormy time because uh, many people were opposed to this, didn't want to have to take additional exams. And, you know, we had to make it voluntary uh, and also to get it through council. Um, I had to agree to a grandfather clause, which I wasn't happy about, but, you know, it was the only way to get it in. So I think, you know, I think the BSC then taking that forward to departmental accreditation has done a huge amount for the personal development of echo cardiographers in this country and also for the quality of echo. Um, and then uh, the other aspects which I, I, I'm proud of the BSC for doing is, is our humanitarian efforts. So reaching out to echo in Africa, I, I think, has been a tremendous thing and it's given a lot of satisfaction to to our members who participated in it plus we've done a lot of good and hopefully in the future we can do more humanitarian missions uh, and then the last thing which of course i'm very biased about is e e erp echo research and practice which you know i i think it's it's a great mark of a society that they can produce a scientific journal um, and, and publish things in that way and i'm really looking forward to working with our new publishers and and uh, and erp opening up again for submissions in the very near future so i know i know it's not a short list claire but uh, but there, there are lots of things going back <laughs> over my career that i i i'm, I'm very pleased to have been involved in um, Mark, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you today. I could talk through to you for hours um, about your career. It's been fascinating. Um, once again, huge congratulations on achieving the McKenzie Medal. It is just staggering. You should be so proud of yourself. We are so proud of you. We're so grateful for everything you've done for society and continue to do. And we look forward to a bright future. Yep, Thank so you so I. very Thank much, you, Thanks. Thanks very much.